All right, welcome everyone. I'd like to just start us off with a prayer that perhaps you all have heard before. Um, it's called Prophets of a Future Not Our Own. Um, so let's begin. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. Thanks, Madeline, and welcome everyone. Um, we hope you're enjoying the teaching so far. Um, we don't have a ton of time together today, so we hope that this is uh, the start of a conversation to help you discern um, graduate school and specifically whether the School of Theology of Min Boston College's School of Theology and Ministry uh, might be right for you. Um, so before we get started, um, the members of the admissions team here are going to introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm Anthony Russo. I'm the Director of Admissions at the School of Theology and Ministry. I'm also an alum of the school, um, and I'm a former Jesuit volunteer and alumni of Holy Cross as well. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Kayla Burt. I'm the Assistant Director for Admissions at the School of Theology and Ministry. Um, I am also Jesuit educated. I went to Lemoyne College. Um, go Fins. After that, I worked in undergraduate admissions for a few years and um, am now kind of heading into my second year at Boston College. And it's good to be with you all today. I'm Madeline. Um, I am a second year MTS student at the STM and I'm also a graduate assistant in the admissions office. Hey everyone, I'm Amanda. I am also a graduate assistant in the admissions office and I am a first year MSW, Masters of Theology and Ministry, dual degree student. Hi everyone, I'm David. I am also a graduate assistant in the admissions office and I'm a first year student in the, in the MTS program. Great, um, and so we'll uh, chat a little bit more about ourselves later and also get a chance to meet all of you. Um, we're gonna start now with a very brief overview of the School of Theology and Ministry, um, again, uh, in the interest of time, we're certainly not gonna be able to cover everything, but we're hoping that through questions you might ask or through uh, meetings after this session as well, we might be able to talk more about your specific interests and how, um, yeah, um, answer any questions that you might have about the school. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, one second. Okay, um, so we are a Jesuit Catholic graduate school of theology and ministry, um, and that phrase theology and ministry really is essential to the way that we do theology. And so we operate from this understanding that theology and ministry really can't be separated, that good theology needs to be oriented toward direct practical ministry and service to the church and the world, and that good ministry depends on rigorous a rigorous study of theology to inform our work. And so in front of you here, you'll see our three master's degrees. Um, and so this will give you a little bit about some of what distinguishes them. They all have, they're all grounded in different 
methodologies and sort of uh, philosophies, but they all are oriented toward uh, educating folks um, to live into their vocation and to serve the church and the world. Um, and so the Master of Divinity is a three-year program and the Master of Theological Studies and Master of Arts in Theology and Ministry are both two-year programs. And again, depending on your interests, one might make more sense if you're looking at um, going on to further study, if you're looking for campus ministry, et cetera. And so we'll be able to work and talk with you to hear about your interests um, and what, um, yeah, what would be most helpful for you. Um, and so just a couple of things that I wanna call out here are that the MA in Theology and Ministry can be completed in a hybrid format, um, which means it could be completed uh, through a mixture of online classes during the academic year and um, summer on-campus classes over the summer. And so that's for folks who can't commit to moving to Boston full-time, though the program can be completed full-time in Boston as well. Um, and the MA in Theology and Ministry, um, the MA in Theology and Ministry can also be combined with one of three other Boston College dual degrees, um, one of uh, three other Boston College programs um, for our dual degree programs, one with the Master of Social Work, which is what Amanda's doing, one uh, Master of Arts in Mental Health Counseling, and the Master of Business Administration. And so we're happy to talk about uh, each of those as well, but they're really great ways to really integrate the study of theology with another discipline um, to, yeah, form yourself for real integrated work in whatever uh, areas you might wanna go into. Uh, I want to talk a little bit now about financial aid because we know that's a big question for folks um, and we understand the barriers that um, the barriers that exist for going to grad school and we really do what we can um, to support you in that, to support you academically, spiritually, and also financially to make, to ease the burden as much as possible. And so 90% of our master's students um, do receive scholarship aid um, and we offer um, a 75% scholarship for students who have served with the Catholic Volunteer Network member program. And we just uh, launched a new series of scholarships, which you've probably seen on the IFTJ app called the Agent of Transformation Awards, which offer up to full funding for applicants committed to working toward uh, faith and justice in one of six areas. And so I'd encourage you to check those out as well, as well as more information about our scholarships and graduate assistantship positions, um, which can be uh, viewed at the link below. Um, one other thing that I want to mention about this um, is that we also have a career placement rate of 95%. And so our support of you starts with um, making sure with access to our school and making sure that you're able to come, but we also um, continue that support throughout your time at the school with resources for academic support, spiritual direction. Uh, we offer financial support for spiritual direction, uh, attending retreats and participating in academic conferences as well. And we also have a robust career preparation program, which again leads to a 95% placement rate uh, for graduates six months after graduation. A couple important notes to come up. Um, I'm gonna, if you're looking to start in the spring, uh, our application deadline is soon on November 15th, um, but our big deadline and our big push is for fall 2021. Uh, the priority scholarship deadline is January 15th. And while you are able, we do accept rolling applications after that, but we encourage you um, to submit by January 15th for the greatest financial aid consideration. Um, a few changes this year, um, depending on if you've looked into our program in the past, one is that the GRE is optional for 2021 admissions. Um, and our Master of Divinity, that's the three-year program, um, used to require a year of ministry prerequisite. And while that is still preferred, it is no longer required. And again, um, that was just a very brief overview into our school. We'll go and we're happy to talk at greater length um, through questions you might have and through the rest of this session but um, want to uh, leave time for your own experiences and questions to come up. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking and turn things over to our three grad assistants. Hi guys, like I said before, my name's Amanda. Um, I am a current MA in Theology and Ministry, Master of Social Work, dual degree student. Um, a little bit about me. I graduated from college in 2019 and decided to take a gap year and do a year of service with the Mercy Volunteer Corps. 
Um, I was looking to get some professional experience, but I was also really hoping to learn how to uh, incorporate my spirituality into my career goals. And that was what MVC really helped me to do. And when I was done with MVC, I realized I needed more education and I was still looking for a school that would help me combine the social work with the spirituality. Um, and that's really what brought me here to Boston College. Um, and I would say if there's one piece of advice I have for someone discerning grad school, it's to find a community that you want to be a part of um, because the way to get the most out of your education is to find a place where you feel supported and like you are going to take advantage of all the opportunities presented to you. Hi everyone, my name is David again. Um, I'm a first year student in the MTPS program. So one of the two year programs that Anthony pointed out. Um, and uh, yeah, just a little bit about me as well. So in 2018, I graduated from Villanova University in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, after that, I was in the ECHO program through Notre Dame, which is a two-year graduate service program in ministry and theology. Um, so while working towards an MA in theology, I was also serving in campus ministry at the Newman Center at Purdue University. Um, and during that time, um, I was really able to discern kind of um, which avenue, I guess, I wanted to pursue within like larger church ministry, you know, did I want to pursue like parish ministry or did I want to pursue more academics? Um, and ultimately I decided that I wanted to pursue the academic side of things. Um, but I also really, um, you know, in, in pursuing academics, I also wanted to make sure that I was in a community that um, was also concerned not only for my intellectual growth, but also my um, my spiritual growth, my social growth, my uh, growth as a whole person. And so mm -hmm. the STM um, really seems like the best place uh, to do that. Um, and so that's kind of how I, uh, how I ended up choosing the STM. And um, I think a piece of advice that I would give for anyone discerning graduate studies um, is to treat the application process, whether it's through the STM or other uh, grad schools uh, is to treat the application process as a process of discernment. Um, it might not always <laughs> you know, taking the GRE or um, getting transcripts together or writing personal statements might not always feel like a prayerful experience all the time, but, um, but you are actively discerning grad school in those, um, in those very like concrete actions. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Hi everyone, um, I'm Madeline um, and I did my undergrad at Notre Dame where I studied English and theology and then after graduating I did an MFA in poetry from Miami of Ohio um, and in that time I really was able to see how our creativity and our imagination can help us envision and advocate for peace and justice in our world but I was really missing um, bringing theology into that conversation um, and that led me to think about continuing my education and pursuing an MTS degree at, um, at BCSTM. Um, I'd say my advice um, was something that was given to me when I was looking at schools and it was to consider which schools had the resources available to really support me as a graduate student. Um, and so the brand new um, financial aid awards that Anthony mentioned are something that I'm really excited about that people will be able to explore. Um, but I also found at the STM support that went beyond um, financial aid. And I also have felt really supported both spiritually and academically and in community. Um, and so that's been something I've been really grateful for, um, to be at a school that is really grounded in that Jesuit understanding of care of the whole person. Um, and I felt really prepared to take on new challenges because that foundation of care is there in my education. Um, so that's the advice that I would give. Thank you all. Um, we hope you found that helpful. Um, it's just to get a sense of like, what are some things that folks think about as they discern um, graduate studies in theology and ministry. Um, we are now going to break uh, into three small groups for about 10 minutes so that we can hear from you, hear what you're thinking about, how we can answer any questions that you might have, and then we'll come back to the large group um, with about five minutes left um, to answer any other questions and to kind of talk about next steps. All right, so with that, I'm going to open the breakout rooms.
All right, hi again, everyone. Um, before we get started, I just wanna go around and hear from you all, if you can say your name, maybe where you're Zooming in from and what you're currently doing, and then we can go from there. Monica, do you wanna start? Yeah, I can start us off. Um, I'm Monica, I'm currently in Chicago. I'm doing a year of service through a program called Amate House. So I'm serving as a campus minister at Arupe College, which is a college of Loyola. So, yeah, and that's how I'm at the teach-in this year. I uh, traveled to Amate House last year to recruit um, and would have would have been there again this fall if uh, travel were, were a thing. Awesome. Yeah. Selena? Hi, uh, I'm Selena. I'm currently in Detroit and I'm serving with uh, the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. So I'm a campus minister over at Detroit Mercy this year. Awesome. And I think I mentioned before, I'm a, I'm a former volunteer as well. Uh, hi, I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm from, I'm in DC right now. Um, I'm just graduated in the spring, so uh, woefully unemployed. Um, and I came to the, um, the teaching through my parish, Holy Trinity. Uh, and I'm, yeah, discerning grad school. Awesome. Hey, I'm Molly. I am a, an undergrad student at Spring Hill College in Mobile. Awesome. Great. Well, welcome everyone again. Um, I really want to use this space um, to, to hear from you. Um, if you have questions, things you're thinking about as you both discern grad school, if you have specific questions about the School of Theology and Ministry, our various programs, um, we thought it'd be helpful to kind of chat in a smaller setting um, so that we could really be attentive to questions that you might have. So with that, um, yeah, I'll open it up to you all. Do you, I feel like I've, I've wondered this just in general, like I, maybe you get this question a lot, maybe you don't, but like how people feel they know they're ready for grad school. Cause I feel like, doing the year of service has like helped me to like really get some real experience and see what that's like. I mean, the STM is on my radar because I graduated from BC undergrad back in May. Oh. Um, so I, I love the STM. The library is the best. Yeah. Um, but I guess I'm just like being in this year of service, thinking a lot about like, how will I know when I'm ready for grad school in general? And then when I think about program, it just, the question gets even bigger. So I don't know if you have any advice or thoughts about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I would say like just talking from my own experience and also kind of working with folks in the application process, I think something that's important is to, if you start to get like an inkling that you are thinking about grad school and that that is something on the horizon, I would say to start the application process um, because while applications are never like easy or like the thing that you're gonna look forward to spending a Saturday doing, I think there's a lot, at least for me, that was learned in like how easily did my personal statement come to me or how much of a, like was I, um, yeah, or just like spending, going through the various like application form pages, like, yeah, it's a pain, but did it feel like a burden or did it feel like sort of like an invitation? And so like paying attention to how you're feeling as you're going through it. Um, and I think also for certainly our school and um, I know a lot of others as well, We also allow for deferrals. So even if you think going through the application process that yes, like everything feels right, I wanna to go to grad school, then you get in, um, it comes time to make a decision. And at that point, something doesn't feel right. Like I think there's a couple of things to be like attentive to there as well. Like I think sometimes making a big decision can seem scary and daunting. So is it a fear-based decision at that point or is it, oh, I'm serving uh, in Chicago and I don't feel ready to stop working directly with folks um, with whom you were serving at that time. And so for me, like going through something and practically, or not practically, but like really discerning and paying attention to my feelings um, during it, I think are super helpful. Um, and what was the second part of your question again? You got it. That was, that was what I was looking for. That okay. really helped. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're good. Okay. I don't know what the other half of my question was. <laughs> I think it might have been about programs, actually, now that I'm thinking of it. And the other oh, yeah. thing I would say about that is we have people switch programs all the time. And so it'd be helpful to have like a conversation with us throughout the application process. Um, 
to, well, yeah, help us kind of hear what you're thinking about and we could definitely like help guide you toward um, um, a certain program, but even through the application process um, and even after folks might, or once they're here in the first semester, people will say, oh, I actually think this program is more in line with what I want and switching is super easy. We press a button basically. So um, I would say, um, yeah, that a lot of that comes from, I think, conversations that you could have from us, but also kind of living into it. Yeah. And real quick, if you decide on one of the dual degrees, do you start that? Like, do you need to know you're doing that right away? Or is that something you can like tack on? Like, how does that work? It kind of depends. So the short answer is um, you don't have to do it right away. So some okay. folks will do the dual degree in like an integrated model. So they'll do like half social work, let's say, and then half theology each semester um, and do it integrated. Others will split it up. And so they'll do all STM year one. Um, all social work year two, and then maybe like a combination in year three. So say you knew that you wanted to start theology and you're thinking about maybe a dual degree, not sure if you'd want to add it, you can definitely do that second model of doing like all theology classes your first year, and then you can apply into the dual degree program. And even if you do it that way, it's not as black and white of saying like, um, years two has to be all social work or whatever. There is some room for, like that integration, but it's definitely more doable to integrate if you start the dual degree at the beginning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll piggyback off of that really quickly. Um, is Are we still eligible as former volunteers for the tuition discount if we're doing a dual degree? That's a great question. So you're eligible, so the 75% that we offer for former volunteers, that only will apply to the theology credits. Um, but the School of Social Work or the other schools, let's say, they'll also evaluate you for financial aid um, in their application process, but they don't have the same like guarantee that we offer for former volunteers. So like, you'll get an aid package from us, you'll get an aid package from them. And then this is kind of getting a little, maybe too granular for right now, but like our aid, our aid, our aid package applies for year one and both summers and the other school's aid package applies for years two and three. It breaks down to the same number of credits um, as if you were like only doing the MA, like basically we'll fund the 48 credits and it just has to be like applied in that kind of regimented way. Okay, um, so would you suggest if there's even an inkling of possibly wanting to do a dual degree, would you suggest staying that up front so that we can see sort of what the aid package is and then can we change it back and say, actually, I just wanna do the MA? Um, yeah. Yep, okay. you can definitely like apply for both programs and then, so you have to apply to them separately. You have to apply to both programs. So like when you get both offers, you would have to say yes to both. So if you applied to both, got in, technically could do the dual degree, but then decided you didn't, you either couldn't or didn't want to, you could like say yes to our offer and say no to the other school's offer. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I did have one other practical question um, as far as the MA program and, the field experiences are really like a big thing for me. How does that process work? Um, do you choose yeah. it on your own or? So you'll work with, a, so both the MA and the MDiv programs have the field placement component. And so you'll work with a, so if you're in the MA program, you'll do the placement in, uh, I'm seeing we're also running out of time. So if we get cut off, um, can add me as a connection on the teaching app and we can definitely keep the conversation going. Um, but, um, what were we just talking about? Ah, uh, were we, what did you ask? Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, thank sense. you. <laughs> work with an advisor to identify the placement. And so you might know you want to go into campus ministry or you might not really know and want to like challenge and try something new and see what that's like. So you'll work with an advisor to find a mutually agreeable placement. And you'll also meet with that placement before you have to say yes to them to make sure it's a good fit. Um, something to note really quickly is that if you're in the dual degree, like your social work field placement, for example, would count for your theology and ministry one. So you wouldn't do it for both programs. Okay. Um, oh, I have power to close the room and I'm not going to do it right now. So um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's something to notice for the dual degrees is that the partner programs placement counts as the theology programs one. Great. Um, any last questions before we head back into the main group? 
Great. Well, again, the, the, we have a few minutes for questions in the large group as well. Um, but again, add us as a connection if you want. Also happy to set up an individual meeting. Want to do what we can to support you and your discernment and kind of figuring out what feels right to you. So it was great to meet you all. And I hope we can keep the conversation going. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I guess we have. Uh, as we wait for the other group to come back, um, does anyone have lingering questions? I know that was short, and so we're happy to answer more questions. Today, we're also happy to stay beyond 3.30. I know the session technically ends at 3.30, so I wanna respect that you might have something else that you're gonna go to, but we're happy to, um, we're happy to stay on past 3.30 as well. I um, was just saying for the group that just got back, um, we know that was quick, but again, we hope this was the start of a conversation and we'll be around at our virtual booth, uh, both via the chat feature and also you can schedule a meeting with one of us to keep the conversation going and really talk about your individual context and interests. Um, and we'll also stay on um, past 3.30. So if you have to go by all means, um, but if you wanna stick around and chat, we'll be here um, and are happy to help continue to talk through things. Um, something I wanted to note before we finish up is that we do have a series of webinars um, coming up. If you wanna uh, kind of attend one of those for some more information, you can go to bc.edu slash stmvisit. Um, it's bc.edu slash stmvisit. Um, and the sign up is on there. Um, and we also offer virtual visits, which is a way to both meet with admissions, uh, meet with a faculty member, and also attend a virtual class. Um, and so we'd really encourage that as well as a way to continue to get to know us and our programs. Um, anyone else uh, from the admissions team wanna add anything uh, before we formally finish up? Kayla? No, sorry, I accidentally clicked my microphone. Uh, so sorry to be obnoxious, but I can just say a quick word. Um, sure. Well, first it was fun to uh, meet you all. And then uh, we had a great chat in our small group, but um, you know, I think we're all here at the teach-in for a reason. Um, it, it does a really great job of, um, you know, kind of teaching us new things and, and new skills that will, you know, hopefully push us to, to kind of build the stamina to, to do this important work, uh, you know, faith-based social justice um, work. And I think the STM is a great place to continue these conversations, um, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom and some of our practical kind of ministerial experiences. So um, I'm not just saying that um, it's, you know, I, I wouldn't say that if I if I uh, didn't believe it, and I hope that you all will continue to um, stay in touch with us, um, even if you aren't planning to come this coming year. Um, we hope that you'll continue to just keep the conversations going. So thanks again. Yeah, and thank you for joining us. We realize that it's a jam packed weekend in and of itself, and also a lot of time in front of a screen. And so at a time where you could have taken a break, we really appreciate uh, you joining us to learn more. Um, again, that formally concludes our time together, but we'll stick around. Um, so if you want to stay back and ask questions, um, we're happy to stay behind. And again, check us out on our booth or our website to, to chat and to learn more. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. And if anyone has questions, feel free to start to ask them. Can I just ask a general question? I popped in a little late, but what is the difference between the Masters of Divinity and the Masters of Theology and Ministry? I think that's the truth. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, sorry we couldn't kind of dive into that more fully earlier, but I would say a really kind of fundamental difference is that one is two years and the other is three years. Um, 
uh, but they both are really oriented toward ministerial leadership in a really integrated way. So through a really like broad-based core curriculum in theology, um, both have a spiritual formation kind of component to the program, both have a contextual ed component to the program. Um, and so in that way, a lot of the makeup is similar. For the MA, you have less, fewer years and thus fewer credits. And so with the MDiv, you're really able to get both breadth and depth. Um, um, and it's definitely the most comprehensive degree that we offer, um, but the MA offers um, kind of coursework in each of the foundational areas of theology. You just don't have as much capacity to go deep into them as you do in the MDiv. Um, I would say that all, the MA also has more of like a practical theology core built into it. So whereas you could, MDiv students do, and I think have to, they do have to take like pastoral care and counseling Etc. But the MA, you have to do not only pastoral care and counseling, but also a religious education course, a practical theology course. Um, there's like a specific practical core classes built into it. Anyone want to add anything? Did you mention cohorts? Nope. Um, so yeah, so that's another difference. Uh, the MDiv um, is a cohort style, so you kind of move through the program um, with a kind of a core group of folks and you'll get together throughout the year. Um, and I was going to say something else, but I guess it is what it is. Um, and then the synthesis exams, which did you mention that as well? Nope. Yeah. So at the end of your time as an MDiv student, um, you'll have synthesis exams, which kind of, uh, bring everything together that you've learned throughout your time as a student, um, as a really fun, um, experience, um, you kind of study in groups together so that, you know, if there was uh, a certain area of theology that like you took a lot of classes in and maybe you have a classmate who did something else, um, you kind of put all that knowledge together um, to pass your synthesis exam. Uh, they sound super scary, um, I know, but um, I promise everybody comes out of it um, relieved and also um, saying, oh, I actually didn't realize how much I had learned during that period of time. I feel like I know a thing or two. This is really awesome. Um, so it, it turns out to be a, a really great experience. Also, I have an important question for you. It's not that important, but you said that you served JVC in Syracuse. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know my good friend, Beth Scanlon? Yes. Okay, so I, I also went to Lemoyne and oh. uh, Beth was a, a saving grace for me, so. <laughs> you she said you should meet Kayla oh I no <laughs> I didn't pay her to say that um. <laughs> oh yeah I miss Beth so much yeah she's a good one mm -hmm. Michael do you know her oh my gosh Beth was the first person I met at the morning she gave me my room key that day and we've been best friends since she just came the other day too oh I'm gonna text her and tell her I met both of you <laughs> Small Jesuit world. Isn't it? Yeah, Kayla was actually one of my RAs freshman year too. And Michael turned out okay. So that's that's <laughs> the good news. <laughs> other Wait, questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah, one other question. So could you get the same job opportunities with the MDiv versus the MA? Uh, sorry, I just got distracted because we had a, something come through, uh, a request on our booth. But yeah, essentially, the short answer is yes. Um, all three programs have um, uh, really high placement rates. So the MDiv has 100%, or in the class of 2019 had 100% placement rate. The MA had a 97% placement rate, and the MTS had a 96% placement rate. So um, yeah essentially really similar work um, that you can do from each. I think it's about like finding which program is like best aligned with how you're hoping to grow um, and what you want out of your grad program. I would say if you wanna do something like hospital chaplaincy, um, the MDiv is probably better suited for that um, just cause it's more like universally known kind of like across like denomination, like Christian denominations. Um, but, and we could talk about some of the um, ins and outs of specific fields of interest and if something might make more sense than the other, but I'd say the short answer is that you can do really similar work with both.
Any other questions? Yeah, I can go. So I know you kind of touched, I'm Bella, by the way, I'm a senior at John Carroll. Um, I was just wondering if the department prefers applicants that are immediately out of undergrad program or with work experience. And even um, maybe for you GAs, um, having, does, do you feel that like the experience better prepared you for your master's degree? Because I know a lot of you have had experience with service um, or other things like that. GAs want to take this one and then we can chime in if necessary. Sure. Um, so I uh, I don't think I'm as equipped to answer the first part of your question about whether like STM prefers like right after college or like um, or like post-grad service or things like that. But for me personally, I think um, so I worked in campus ministry for two years, um, college campus ministry for two years before coming to the STM and um, I would say that that definitely um, influences my perspective that I bring uh, to my classes and um, just influences like the different questions that I'm asking um, because I do have that kind of like on the ground ministry experience. Um, I think, I don't think it, you know, puts me at an advantage or disadvantage. I think it just influences what I bring. And I think the STN does a really good job of um, kind of welcoming uh those different perspectives okay thank you mm -hmm. um and i can just kind of speak to the first part of your question and then i'll let um madeline or amanda chime in um about kind of their own experience but um i don't know that there is a preference um mm -hmm. for people to right um I mean, we have people, tons of people who come in at like 21 years old. Um, there are people who know absolutely, like, I want to study theology. It's what I wanted to do for the past X amount of years. Um, and they just go for it. Um, we also have people who are 70 years, 70 years old and say, yeah, like I've worked for a number of years, I've retired and now I just want to come back and learn um, for my own kind of personal growth, right? So it's just kind of, um, where you are, um, what you want to do, and all of those experiences um, from 21 to 70 and everything in between just kind of enrich the conversations in the classroom um, and the things that we're able to learn. Well, not weird because I'm not in the classroom, so I don't know why I said that, but the things that students are able to, to learn from each other. So, got it. Thank you. Yeah. And I would just add to, I think what uh, Kayla and David said is spot on, but uh, just to reiterate, like you have to do what's best for you. I think people who have other experiences coming, like certainly if you have other experiences um, after undergrad, like they're gonna shape how you interact and engage with the material. Um, but I think like ultimately like at each point, like deciding what you're gonna do next, if someone doesn't, else after graduating and then decides to go to grad school like it's about like what feels right next for you and so um if you want to like chat more uh, i'm sure with either david or madeline or amanda who had to step out for another meeting um to hear about what it was like um how they like interact with like course material um having done something before coming here um or if you'd want to connect with someone who did make the decision to come straight from undergrad um like that could be helpful too. But I would say like, uh, trust yourself and what feels right to you. And um, yeah, you can also go ahead and apply. And if it turns out not to feel right at the end, you could defer for a year, do a year of service or something and then start the following fall. Um, so trust your gut, I think is the best thing you can do in this process. Thank you, that was helpful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for us? I actually, yes, I have a question too. Um, so I um, am very interested in the, I was looking at the theology ministry degree, um, but one of my things I would love to do is I think to work in like a campus ministry type setting at like a college or something or another area of student life, but still incorporating that. 
Um, are there any opportunities to like take any of those kind of coursework too? Like I know theology is the ministry is a big part of it, but you said in terms of like pastoral or in, um, practical applications of that, um, like either coursework, um, dealing with like some kind of higher education or like practical experience working in a college setting. Yeah, that's a great question. So I, before doing my grad work at the STM, I did a master's in higher ed administration. Um, so I, I did them separately, um, just based on like how my own sort of journey unfolded. But um, a great thing about being part of a larger university wow. is that um, we do have access to courses across the university that folks can use for electives. So um, you can take elective courses through the Lynch School of Education, we have a, there's a faculty member there who specializes in um, faith-based higher education. So you could take a course on Catholic higher ed or religion in higher ed, or if you don't wanna do specifically Catholic higher ed, you can take college student development or classes like that. So there's definitely space to, um, yeah, use, take courses in other graduate schools as electives. Um, I've been toying whether or not to say this out loud and I'm going to, but I hopefully I don't regret it is that we are actively working on a dual degree with the higher ed program. It is not ready yet, and so I don't want to jinx it, um, but it is something we are like, act I have a meeting tomorrow about it. So um, it's something we're really working toward. Speak it into existence, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> that would be um, ideal. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're thinking, you know, campus ministry, I mean, we have a number of like graduate assistantships um, that we have, and then um, BC, kind of just the larger graduate school office, um, maintains a list of a number of just other assistantships in the Boston area. Um, and so, you know, if, if that's something that you think you might be interested in, um, there is kind of like a, an application process and, and that sort of thing to see if you'd be um, you know, to, to see if things will work out, but that would be a great opportunity to, you know, both learn things in the classroom and then apply that to um, the actual work of, of being a campus minister. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. These are great questions. Um, and I think like really important questions for your discernment. I'm gonna head out, thank you so much. Thank you. Great Hi, to meet you. you.